All right, so at this point, I've got some work to do. Beta base now has itself with some laser turrets. I've also got Mags to, you know, upgrade my base a little bit. So now I've got like the Nanotech workshop and the quantum um, laboratory and all this other stuff. There's my strike, by the way. So now I got a strike in this one. So, with the strike here, I actually want to move to Charlie here. Over to Delta. Now here's a question, should I probably um, take those guys out because they might relocate with the super thing, so... That would be unfortunate, so I don't want that happening. Um, so we're going to put these guys into the strike. And that way, Charlie 2 here. Charlie 2 can relocate itself over to their base. Hopefully without any issue. It's not a world map. Charlie 2 is going to walk over here to Delta and then I'll have like a Chinook craft over here in Delta. For a moment. Eventually I'll, I'll place, I'll have this have free strikes all around, but... I'm not yet there. Few days for that one. And everyone will build that in a few more days as well. So, a few days to get both these up. That's fine. I'm all for that. So, I got a strike. Now, note that with the strike, that they basically have 10 slots for troops. So, now I can have 10 troops running around. Which is quite nice. So now I've got like an assault, heavy weapon, sniper, rifleman, rifleman, shield, rocketeer, rifleman. I probably want to start throwing in, I guess, extra rifleman and assaults and other stuff. We'll send you in. All right, we'll send you as well. So here's my first strike. It's got 10 guys in it. That means I got five guys to basically replace the other guys when they have, you really have a casualties, but for now, whatever. Eventually I'll have another strike here too, but that's yet to come. So I have to wait for a little bit for that. later getting our carry weight up. Now for research. Basically I'm slowly getting the other stuff here done. So that's quite nice. Worth knowing though is that Delta now I have access to like the workshop and quantum thing over here as well. And I've got funds so I can hire and fire scientists over here too I think. Right? Yeah, I can hire more over here, so. We'll get some scientists to come over here to this base. That's going to cut my funding a lot, but whatever. So that stuff is all getting repaired and jury rigged and all that. And financial issues, but oh well. Nice. Reminds me, I should make sure I'm still hiring guys over here. I want to get like 15 guys in like all my bases, so...
Still some hiring to go on for here. Ooh, good one. Oh, I can't hire him. I don't have the money. Hopefully he stays in there. That's actually a good one. James Chapman right there. Good stats pretty much all around. Ooh, alien prison plasma. Nice. I have to read all this stuff too, but... We'll get to that soon. Let's get this out of the way really quick. The aliens communication ray. Then I can focus on the plasma weaponry. Awesome. So I got these guys over here. So now if I need to, I got like, you know, a B team over here. Not perfect, but you know, that's a good basic setup. Alright, you know what? Maybe it's time to start reading these Wikipedia entry entries. And I'll note that I think I actually forgot to read one of the wikis for like the alien craft, so I'll do that in this episode. So we'll start with the landing ship's UFO, because I think I missed this one. The landing ship is a medium-sized alien craft of unusual large crew. Though bulkier and more powerful than the Corvette, this saucer-shaped craft is actually primarily a transport vessel. The saucer is split into a bridge on the upper level and a cargo hold on a level below. Comfortably large enough to accommodate a terror squad or even equipment we believe would be required to establish a permanent alien facility on the surface of our planet. These two rooms are joined by a pair of teleportation devices that instantaneously transport any unit that steps onto one of the platforms over to the other. Despite studying the extent extensively, we have still no idea at all how these devices function. Almost as interesting as the armor playing on the exterior of the ship, it requires immense firepower to crack one of these vessels open, which we assume was due to the more extensive armor playing, but troublingly, the landing ship actually has much less armor playing than the Corvette. We have taken samples of this iron plate for further study. The vessel's primary weapon is this scaled-up version of the cannon on the Corvette, but also possesses a small, smaller rapid-fire secondary weapon that packs sufficient punch to make a frontal approach inadvisable. It's basically they're like, you know, more powerful Corvettes in like every, any shape of the word. Alright, so... Precision Plasma. The alien Precision Plasma is, is an extra-racial infantry weapon that measures nearly 50 inches in length. It is fitted with a complex holographic setting array and produces a focused bolt of plasma that travels extremely quickly and can maintain stability over great range, suggesting it is an alien equivalent of our sniper rifle. The weapon has remarkably internal similarities to a heavy plasma, possessing the same length and generation chamber that significantly amplifies the energy content of the resulting bolt. The main difference lies with the helical spiral of electric mags housed in the barrel of the weapon, long and thin and short and compact. This results in a narrow and stretched bolt of plasma that can carve through the air with less resistance and destabilization than normal, and then focus a great deal of energy into a near impact point to give more penetrative power. This fearsome penetrative power is actually some of a mixed blessing. The plasma bolts will puncture through almost any concealed type of armor, but will also puncture through the silter underneath. While I doubt having a tunnel half an inch wide burn straight through your body is a particularly pleasant experience, it is unlikely to be fatal unless it strikes, both, um, it strikes the brain or another vital organ. This weapon therefore, therefore presents an interesting conundrum. It is very accurate even at long range, and will bypass any protective equipment the target may be wearing, but it also fires slowly and is unlikely to kill a soldier outright. So basically this thing just punches a hole through the thing, but unless you do, do a direct hit, it's not going to kill him. Alright. I think we've uh, already looked at all this stuff.
Xenonaut base structures, base upgrade. Having covered our scientific ex exploits and unlocked the secrets of the alien base in my last report, this covers the resulting improvements to our own facilities. The greatest improvement has been seen in our laboratories and workshops. Both structures now allow scientists or engineers to work almost 50% more efficiently than before. Our new biological computers and instruments mean that my team are no longer entirely reliant on our own ample brain power and have been able to fully automate several formerly time consuming tasks, giving us more time to think. Well, my doorbells ring. Ah, doorbells and phone rings and everything else. It's always so fun. Okay, so whatever. Um, basically, this is like, you know, 50% more powerful. My uh, labs and my workshops now, and my guys can basically work together very easily. Alright, so I've also upgraded our laboratory soundproofed, allowing brilliant minds among us to work without being disturbed by less brilliant. So blah, blah, you know. It's not a, like a uh, researcher. There has also been a number of less um, obvious improvements to our base, e.g. the refit of base kitchens with laser base ovens capable of cooking food in mere seconds, or the upgrade recreational areas with holographic entertainment consoles. Both of these prove immensely popular, but unfortunately the replacement of the showers in the living quarters with vastly superior alien jail sacks proved less popular. Events culminate in an incident with some of your soldiers leading to the upgrade being postponed for now, but I hope you will discipline your men accordingly. Finally, we have developed an internal network that links all our systems together. Whether the same facility or not, the morning we were able to transmit a mildly amusing image of a cat halfway across the world, suggesting it will be an excellent tool for sharing classified information with our organization. I named this impressive creation the Inter Network, and should be very surprised if it did not catch on. So haha. Ha. Note that basically, again, this is taking place in 1977, quote unquote. So basically what's happening, this guy's created the interweb so to speak. But yeah. It's not a, don't really care about him. Alright, let's just fast forward in time a little bit until... Eee, they put on our outpost, those bastards. Hmm. I wonder if I want to attack that right away. I may want to wait until I get a, uh, a strike over here and then I, then I can like, you know, put all these guys in here. That might be op um, optimal, to, uh, optimal to basically taking this out. And yeah, all these UFOs decided to come anyway, so... Yeah. Well, whatever. Let's do some final prep for all my guys. Alright, so in Alpha Base, we more or less have these guys ready, ready, to rock, ready to rock and roll. Looks like the guy who's here. Unassigned. Alright, so note that basically it was the status this guy's wounded. So I gotta wait for him to be unwounded so I can basically start assigning him to stuff again. But for now. I think this team's ready to go. More or less. It's funny how Beta has the strike and Alpha doesn't, and Alpha's probably the one with like the heavier strike team and all that. Oh well. And these guys might be getting some action now. That'll be lovely. Actually, to be honest, I probably don't want to send these guys out just yet because they're not really ready for it. I have to get a little bit more power, I think, going for these guys before I can send them out. Flashbangs and our crap. You need to be uh, 
correctly changed up. I never actually changed any of these guys, you know, to have appropriate gear. There, a little bit of gear for you. And yeah, I think next time, next episode, I'm gonna try and figure out a little bit about trying to equip these guys with appropriate stuff so I don't have to keep doing this, like manly making these guys have their stuff. I'm sure it's fun to watch. Very fun to watch, but there is more, you know, ideal ways of just setting these guys up at this point. Then man manually, you know, dra drag and click everything like this. You know, another thing to figure out on this base, I also have to make sure that, um, Basically at this base, I'm also going to have to basically work on getting these guys wolf armors all over the place. So I can't really send them out just yet. They don't have wolf armor. Which would be bad if I sent them out into combat to just get, you know, killed constantly. Stupidly. All right, there we go. A little bit more stuff for these guys. Next time there'll be an alien outpost to deal with. For now though, I think we're done. So take care.